Scientists find planet orbiting three suns. Sunlight affects where the languages have a word for blue and Trans-Himalayan region becoming one of the most promising global astronomical sites. I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science offers from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. Let's move on to story number one. And a planet that orbits three stars at once has been discovered for the first time. Astronomers believe it is located at a distance of 1300 light years from the Earth. The planet has been identified by astronomers from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas in the system GW Ori. Astronomers had so far observed planets with unitary star systems and dual star systems. However, this is the first such discovery of a first triple sun planet. Researchers used the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array ALMA telescope to analyze the three observed dust rings around the three stars, which are critical to forming planets. However, while studying the data, they found that a substantial yet the puzzling gap in the circum triple disk. A paper on the finding was published in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. And one of the biggest driving forces behind astronomy is the continuous search for the possibility of life not just in our solar system but beyond. Researchers had recently suggested that Hyacian worlds beyond our solar system which could have signs of life could be detected within two or three years. Let's move on to story number two. Color is a spectrum. Red fades from orange to yellow, whereas green merges to turquoise, then blue. Languages treat the spectrum in different ways. Some have different words for green and blue, others lump the two together. Some barely bother with color terms at all. The question is why, says Dan D. Du, an evolutionary linguist at the Lumiere University, Lyon. Now, he and his colleagues have found evidence for an unexpected answer. People with more exposure to sunlight are more likely to speak languages that lump green and blue together under a term that linguists dub GRU. That's because of the effects of lifetime of light exposure, the team speculates. Lots of sun causes a condition called lens brunescence that makes it harder to distinguish the two shades. Lens brunescence is just one of the many theories explaining why color vocabulary is so different across languages. Light exposure played a big role in whether languages separate blue from green, the researchers conclude in the journal Scientific Reports. In brighter places, either those that were closer to the equator or had less annual cloud cover such as Central America and East Africa, languages were significantly less likely to separate green from blue. That suggests a lifetime of exposure to bright light pushes whole communities away from baking a blue-green distinction into their language. Let's move on to story number three. Well, the Indian Astronomical Observatory IAO located at Hene near Leh in Ladakh is becoming one of the most promising observatory sites globally, according to a recent study. This is due to its advantages of more clear nights, minimal light pollution, background aerosol concentration, extremely dry atmospheric condition and uninterrupted monsoon, the Department of Science and Technology said. Researchers from India and their collaborators carried out a detailed study of the nighttime cloud cover fraction over eight high altitude observatories, including three in India, the DST said. They analyzed data sets for the Indian Astronomical Observatory IAO in Hene and Merak, Ladakh, and Devasthal Nainital in India. Ali Observatory in the Tibet Autonomous Region in China, South African Large Telescope in South Africa, University of Tokyo Atacama Observatory, and Paranal in Chile, and the National Astronomical Observatory in Mexico. The team found that the Henai site, which is as dry as Atacama Desert in Chile and much drier than Devastal and has around 270 clear nights in a year and is also one of the emerging sites for infrared and sub-millimeter optical astronomy. 
This is because water vapor absorbs electromagnetic signals and reduces their strength, the DST said in a statement. The research led by Dr. Shanti Kumar Singh Ningobam of Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore, and scientists from Aryabhata Research Institute of the Observational Sciences in Nainital, a DST institute and collaborators from St. Joseph's College, Bangalore, and the National Institute of Metrological Sciences, South Korea, University of Colorado and Chemical Sciences Laboratory, USA, has been published in the monthly notices for Royal Astronomical Society. And with this, friends, this is a wrap on this edition of Science Time. We'll be back with more interesting stories from the world of science next week. Do watch Science Time every Friday at 9 p.m. only on India Science. Namaskar.